So, uh, let's talk about The Raven, which stars John Cusack playing Edgar Allan Poe. He, we're going to play a little clip first of all. Here he is arguing with Kevin McNally, who is his editor. I'm broke. Then try writing another telltale heart. People love blood. They love death. Don't you think if I couldn't churn out another telltale heart or a pit in a pendulum, I wouldn't indenture my very soul to the devil? Henry, you've got to publish my review. I'm desperate. Look, I need stories. Gripping stories. I've got nothing left. I've used up all my tricks. And try laying off the liquor and the tinctures, because it's rotting your brain. I only drink occasionally to be social, to alleviate my shyness. And the tinctures are purely therapeutic. Slight palliative against the chill of an orphan's despair. And next we're speaking to John Cusack because he is the star of The Raven. John, it's very nice to speak to you. Good afternoon. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. I, I have to tell you, I'm not a big fan of 1849 anymore. I thought it was going to be quite a good year. But the way it comes in your movie, I'm not sure I want to go back there. It all seems a bit grim. It's an excellent vintage. <laughs> so... Uh, 1849 is not for you, huh? No, we're back. So we're back to 1849, which is the story of Edgar Allan Poe. Well, it's a, it's a sort of a story. It's his last five days. Just take us through the story that you have in The Raven, please, John. It's a, it's a fictionalized account of the last four days, four or five days of his life. But what happens in the story is there is someone who starts doing copycat crimes of his great stories, and the detectives think it might be Poe because he was a rather eccentric character in his day, and a bit of a, a rogue, and uh, but then they realize that they need to use Poe to, to crack out, you know, to crack the mind of Poe. So he he has to be the one to catch his own copycat killer. Tell us a bit more about Poe because when when we start the film, I mean, what what's great about him is we kind of like him eventually. But but when the film starts, I mean, you're quite obnoxious, really, aren't you? Somebody described him as a the you know the original blasted soul. You know he was a real wanderer and um, he was a kind of an outcast and you know he was a and he was a no, notorious uh, kind of drunk, really. So he would go on these benders and he was um, always. He said he used to say he he, he was really at war with the the world. I think in many ways and he. Um, he loved women, but he sort of put them on a pedestal. So he, he wasn't a, he wasn't like a womanizer, but he he almost made women into like godlike figures and and tried to find them like a spiritual connection to the women. But he was at war with all other men, so he hated other writers and he used to like try to destroy other writers and write horrible reviews of their work and um, get into kind of physical fights and intellectual fights with any other male. So he did he was basically, you know, if you have a if you have a problem with half the population of yes. Earth, it's probably your problem. <laughs> did you have to what did you have to do to to look like him? I mean, cuz you know, you... I didn't really worry about that. You know, we just uh we didn't do the mustache thing cuz it felt like it would be too a little bit more like Charlie Chaplin or the Tramp. So we just uh he you know, he he didn't have he had periods where he had like mutton chops and no facial hair and a goatee, so we sort of just tried to find a look that felt right and just got to try to get into the substance of him. Did you? I mean, I was reading you had to lose twenty five pounds or something. I mean, was no, no one asked me to. I just thought it would be cool to do because you know he was, you know, the pictures I've seen of him, he was he was pretty poor and didn't have a lot any money and um, was drinking a lot and he just looked like he was skeletal and razor thin. So I thought it would be good to do that to sort of get into it a a, a lot of what some people know about Edgar Allan Poe um, comes from this libelous biography written after his death by Rufus Griswold uh, his literary rival and uh, and this kind of I don't know can we talk about this John without spoiling it I don't know if you want to know what the filmmakers think of Rufus Griswold go see the Raven What, what what can we add to that well, I think uh, uh, there's there's a there's a bunch of like kind of there there are a bit of like literary inside jokes throughout the whole movie. Like uh, <clears throat> there was a um, there was a um, theory that he died of rabies. So of course, you know, we we gave. Uh, I don't know if Poe actually had a pet raccoon, but in the movie he has a pet raccoon. <laughs> but that's that's for that theory, and then Griswold. Uh, um, was sort of responsible for after his death um, for trying to suppress his writing and, and and some vicious character assassinations on Poe. Now Poe, you know, 
Poe uh, didn't do himself any favors by getting into intellectual, literary, and physical fistfights with almost any <laughs> rival writer that he could think of. He once said I, he intends to put up with nothing that he could put down. So, I mean, he was he was in a constant state of war with other writers, mm -hmm. but the Griswold one was particularly gruesome. So, um, in this fictionalized account, Griswold uh, me meets his end, and that's what makes the cops think that perhaps it's Poe, because he, he would have a motive to kill Griswold. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, some listeners' questions for you, John. Um, yeah. he, uh, this from uh, Jane Moffat. The Sure Thing is one of my favorite movies. The question is, can he still shotgun a beer? Sure. When was the last time you shotgunned a beer? I can't remember. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It's been a while, but I think I could do it. Cameron Crowe's recently talked about the possibility of a sequel to Say Anything. Is, is, do you know anything about that? Well, he hasn't mentioned it to me. And and you would expect him to? Well, I don't know. Maybe he's gonna. You know, maybe he's gonna. You know, make it with Tom Cruise. You know. But would you be up for it? Sure. I'd love to work with Cameron again. Uh, Nikki Mann says, uh, "My friend Caroline and I are huge fans of John and are planning a Kusakathon very soon." Which... That sounds like it could be very hazardous to your <laughs> it health. Does, it, could, it? it sounds like it, you could. You might not want to operate machinery. That, that, that <laughs> sounds like a bad thing. Anyway, they say which five movies starring you should we watch? Okay, so this is a Kusakathon being planned, and they would quite like you to suggest the films. I'm not. Uh, I'm not the person to to say that. Well, who else would be? I well, I don't know. I don't know what they like. What kind of genre? Okay, which which of your films do you? rate the highest which of, which of mine don't suck no i'm trying to be positive here well it's easy to be positive you're the one that's bringing it down all the time I, I, well i figure you're going to someone's going to bring it down so i'm I not i have I'll, no i have no pre negative preemptive strike i have no stuff. negative questions here at all nothing nothing hmm. would you like well, me would you like <laughs> me to go negative on you <laughs> no no you can if you want I'm, I'm up for anything um high fidelity's good yeah that's a good that's a good brit movie they, they might have. I'll mention the two I did with Stephen Frears, right? He's a great British director. Now that I, since I'm in London, the Grifters and High Fidelity are good. So those would be two for them. Okay. Uh, related to that, Joe Murphy. This is another listener's question. Did uh, Did John discover any great music that he'd previously been unaware of whilst doing High Fidelity? Yes, for sure. Uh, I didn't know about the Beta Band, and when I did High Fidelity, I found the Beta Band. Yeah. But now they're not together. Uh, now, so coming next, this is quite interesting. So you're doing Poe, and we've mentioned on some of the darker side of this, and then you're going to be playing a death row killer in Lee Daniels' film The Paperboy and a serial killer in The Foes and Ground, and rumors about Richard Nixon coming up. I mean, lighten up, John. Well, I, it's, not, it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not up to me, really. It's like, uh, you know, if they're good, they're good jobs that come your way with good people, what are you going to do, you know? But uh, they, those could be pretty funny too. You never know. You, th you think that what well, just in the inherently in making those kind of films that there's some humour which, which we don't see. Yeah, could be. So the next. So when is the next? Is that the next film is true? Yeah, you're playing Nixon. I don't in, know in about. It. I just did this uh, movie with Lee Daniels. Yeah, and uh, we had a great experience. And he said, you know, so he said, would you want to play Richard Nixon? And I, I haven't read the script yet. And but uh, so I said, hey, I'll, I'll come do anything with you because I had a great time with him. But uh, I haven't read it, but I, it sounds fun to me. Would it be a, a, a loving, affectionate portrayal? I don't know. I think maybe, um, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe, uh, you know, as he's sort of, you know, him and Henry Kissinger bombing <laughs> Cambodia into the Stone Age. Maybe there'll be a few loving glances between them. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the point of view of the script is. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll await that with interest. Uh, for the moment, we have The Raven, which is the new movie from John Cusack. John, we appreciate you talking to us. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.